sure you are on a free internet connection as we do not want you to miss any part of this event. And please do not forget to fill in your attendance, the link for the attendance in the chat box. Thank you for listening. forget to key in your attendance and the link uh, for the attendance in the chat box. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Waalaikumsalam. Welcome Dr. Kausa. I think I will start now. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to line of lecturers, brothers and sisters. Welcome to History Department Academic Briefing and Mass Gathering 2022. Before we begin, let us express our gratitude to Allah Almighty for with his blessing and bounties that we are able to gather on this very beautiful morning. And may this event flow smoothly and conveniently, inshallah. 
Without further ado, I would like to invite Brother Muhammad Shukri for the recitation of Doa. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Al-Fatihah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fihi. Kama yang bagi di jalali wajhikal karimi wa azimi sultanik. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. On this blessed morning, in conjunction with the His Forum and One Mass Gathering and Academic Briefing, we beseech thee and grateful towards you in favor of all the infinite blessings to us, your humble servants, to live in safe and prosperous life. We seek your blessing for flawless progress of this event from the beginning till the end. We seek your guidance to steer clear of event that will detriment the progress of this event. Ya Latif, Ya Rahman. Please bless us with your Taufiq wal Hidayah. Please guide International Islamic University to Malaysia to greatness, peace, glory and prosperity in this world and hereafter. Make us a responsible intellectual, granted us with a valuable knowledge that will be beneficial to mankind. In order to gain your mardatillah, make us your righteous servant that follow your commands and neglect the sinful act. O oh Allah, please forgive for our wrongdoing. Beloved country Malaysia, please save us from any trade a natural disaster. And to you, Ya Allah, we ask for security and prosperity upon us, our leaders and our country. Restore patience in us in order to face the challenge from you. Please accept our deeds and please reward us accordingly. Allahumma ja'al jam'ana hadha jam'an marhuma wa tafarruquna min ba'dihi tafarruqan ma'suma. ولا تجعل اللهم فينا ولا معنا ولا ما يسبعنا شقية ولا مطرودا ولا محرومة اللهم إنك تعلم أن هذه القلوب قد اجتمعت على مهبتك والتقص على طاعتك وتوحدت على دعوتك وتعاهدت على نصرة شريعتك ووثق اللهم رابطتها وأدم ودها وحدها سبولها وَمْلَأَهَا بِنُورِكَ الَّذِي لَا يَخْبُوا وَشْرَحْ صُدُرَهَا بِفَيْدِ الْإِيمَانِ بِكْ وَجَمِيلِ التَّوَكُّلِ عَلَيْكْ وَأَهْيِيهَا بِمَعْرِفَتِكْ وَأَمِسْحَا عَلَى الشَّهَادَةِ فِي سَبِيلِكْ إِنَّكَ نِعْمَ الْمَوْلَى وَنِعْمَ النَّصِيرِ اللهم آمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين. Amin amin ya rabbal alamin. Thank you brother Muhammad Shukri. Dear brothers and sisters, I would love to give a warm welcome to everyone for your time and effort for attending this program. I hope by the end of this program, you will all get clear vision on the flow of your study, especially for the new intake student. We will start off today's event with a few words of welcoming remarks by Dr. Arshad, followed by presentation of academic briefing by Dr. Alsi. Then we will have FYP briefing from Dr. Kalsar. After that, we will have internship briefing from Dr. Fauzia. Lastly, we will also have a Q&A session after all of the presentations are finished. And that will conclude the end of our program today. Before we start this event, we would like to show you the, the video presentation of the staff and lecturers in the history department. Thank you. 
Welcome to the Department of History and Civilization. I wish you all the best. Dear brothers and sisters, to begin this program, we are pleased to have Dr. Arshai to deliver the opening remarks. Please welcome, Dr. Bismillah I would like to thank all of the staff and the students, both who has short time they have made this gathering possible. And this program, of course, annual program, or maybe every semester we have the mass gathering as well as academic briefing for the new as well as the old student. Here in this way, <laughs> for the student, those who are new, those who are going to be graduated or on the path of graduation. So they have a lesson for that why they are taking history, maybe the academic advisors are they will tell you. But here I need departments need and what department want to would like to highlight this. First thing to meet the needs both our students and future employers. The members of the faculty are constantly thinking about not only that they teach, but also they teach the challenges, how the people student can face the challenges in the market, or to find the practical training. That's why university or our department both have the practical training for the three months ago, and they are, now is a compulsory for that. So these are the things that are essential for them. But before going to the detail, I will take a few minutes to talk to this one. One thing, of course, the students are coming, that's fresh, join the university, how they inspire, how they attract. The first basic thing I wanted, teachers, quality of a teacher. The teacher is the first one who can attract the student, even the subject. A good teacher must have self-confidence this is the quality of a teacher or good teacher. Self-confidence, which is the key to success. A good teacher is the beloved to their students and his lifestyle and way of talking left a mark on his student. So everything is to mark how you live, how you talk, what you promise, what you have done. Teachers, habits, styles, experiences, confidence, honor, and dignity make them beloved. We can all remember our own teachers who inspire us. If a teacher is lacking in such qualities, he or she cannot be a good teacher. Therefore, it is important for the teacher to develop and maintain a great interpersonal skill and to build rapport with the students. A good teacher is always steady in his behavior and fulfill his promises. This is what makes him popular and reputable in society manifesting honesty and justice. A good teacher is always a good student who always embraces knowledge and direction. So this before going into detail, few things, I just want to take a few minutes more time, not much. So this is important that how you look your teachers, or how you are looked by, assessed by our students. So, okay? so this is important not to do the false promises. What we promise, what we do. I will give just two minutes or more time I give an example, which is a future for you. Look, uh, Indian educationist, if you Google, you find his name is was Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan. He, from 1817 until 1898, he was a man who worked under the last Mughal 
ruler in India and he saw the decline of Muslim in India, crushing and killing of Muslim by the British colonial power in India, hanging Muslim, all those things he saw in his own eyes. And most of the Muslim, those who can do well to do, they try to migrate from India, like today, situation is bad. So he also felt mostly they go to Mecca at that time. He also felt. But he decided that if everybody goes to Mecca, and majority of the people, those are ignorant, well, they cannot go, or they don't have means. So what to do? So he decided to stay in India at all. In this way, he made the most important thing to educate Muslim. Today we are also lacking everybody, a good ministry is everywhere. But still our community is in, it's still at a level of whole world you can compare. Well, maybe Malaysia has good rate of education, but not every country. So in this way, how to educate people? So in this way, he tried to make it. He said that Sasir Ahmad's educational philosophy, just I give you an important item, was character building. Everywhere today, we are talking all uh, technology, but nobody talk about the character building. And that is the key of success of anything. So character building and guidance. In his opinion, the education of an individual or group can only be achieved if bringing up was given enough importance to the same time. It means apart from education, your lifestyle, habit, behavior, manners. This is important. He believed the goal of education and character building work together. He attached full importance to community life and to consider as a crucial, as a soul for the body. This idea he elaborated in one of his lectures or addresses. This was a condition of education, but we cannot achieve our goal from education only. Can education alone produce a civilized person? A load of books on the back of a donkey will not teach him anything. Does education alone form a nation? Can education only raise a nation? In the eyes of the world, never. Unless people become good human beings and the nation become a nation that can be regarded as civilized. Thus, we Muslim must gain moral education. It is as important for a nation as a spirit is for a body. For a nation to become a true nation without moral education is almost impossible. Today, our picture or in the world, our status, we look nowadays, Ukraine and the fighting there, if you watch TV, or report of BBC, they are giving Muslims, they are not comparing with this Ukraine and US, they, are, they are looking the Syrian Muslim as well as the Afghan Muslim. They said they are illiterate, poor, or, but Ukrainians are rich and good. So you are comparing about the, this one, the our, our, now the sign of Muslim is that. Because of what? Ignorance, poverty, or maybe because poverty leads to the bad things. So this is the Sasayyad Ahmad Khan. He gave in the 19th century this kind of education and his own way. He established a university, a school, college, later you become university, and that is called Aligarh Muslim University. Today in India, if you Google it, Aligarh Muslim University. But he has to train. He brought the good teachers, everybody, he taught them good, to teach them good education as well as the moral education. Now, UIA, I'm talking now, come at the two minutes by UIA. UIA was the same notion about educators or leaders they built it. But today, UIA is not on the same path what the actual curriculum was made. I, I, I have no chance to go, but a few years back, there are certain program I went to host a student. Many students I found moving around in the shops. Many of them. And that is the uh, UIA or this one, this is the purpose of that university. The moral education is very much important. Even male and female, both ways. And that was the means of purpose of education we have to gain. You get the piece of paper, degrees, but it can maybe it can bring you job, but not the manner. 
So this is a both important things. So I will end with this. We are long there, but I I will just end this one. So thank you very much for listening this one. I just try to uh, look the student how because I am quite long here. So I saw the earlier phase and today phase also. So both phases are quite different. It's okay. So that's why I spoke on this one. We have to our parents send you here to edu for education. You have to learn and importantly to minor also. You are here mixing with many students from outside local here. Many things. I, I also have my children also study. They live in a hostel. They, some of them is Malay very fluently and they are very fond of the Malay food because of the industry they are living together. That's what they learn. So I'm happy that you also learn speaking, the style, behavior, but good thing, not the bad. It's okay. So uh, thank you very much. And last but not the least, I would like to thank the, our staff or colleague and our student. Simply the teachers, the colleague, they look at all friends and to give them a special thank for this, those who has new program and try to educate you for the future generation. You become the leader, future leader of the country. You have to lead this. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Arshad, for your beautiful welcome very much just now. And now let us proceed with the presentation of academic briefing by Dr. Alsi. Please welcome, Dr. Uh, Assalamu alaikum to everyone. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes. Oh, great. So welcome to the academic uh, briefing and uh, for the new students. Uh, I am Dr. Olsi Yazizi, so I'm going to uh, be your lecturer as well as uh, academic advisor. And uh, I'd like to uh, invite the new students to join our department and uh, to remind them of the great opportunity that they are going to have with us by studying history and uh, by quoting Cicero. I want to remind everyone that uh, historia magistra vita est. History is teacher of life. So when you are going to study with us uh, in the coming uh, semester and years, I hope that uh, you will learn a lot, uh, not only about getting a degree in history, but also in a way to enlighten yourself and to better understand what is the meaning of this world where we are. What does it mean to be a historian? And how we historians can act as, in a way, people who understand the past, who analyze the past, and we understand the present, and we can also predict the future. So you are very special students of our university and I want you to be really motivated for joining our department and for studying there. All right, without any further ado, I want to, uh, in a few uh, minutes, to give you a brief explanation about our department of history and uh, civilization. So I'm going to show you the requirements that we have for you and the path that you have to follow. So Aisha, can you go to the next slide, please? All right. So in our university, you have two options. You can either major or minor in history. So option number one is a single major in history or history and civilization. And uh, Option number two is the major in history, but the minor in Islamic revealed knowledge. You can also major in history, but you can minor in English language and literature, in Arabic, and in other departments of our university that you can see them in the table that is in front of you. Can you go to the next slide, please? All right, now, for you to graduate 
in history, you need to fulfill a number of requirements. So number one, you have to have 20 credit hours, which are university required courses. Then fully required courses are six credit hours. And then you have the core courses, which in total, they are, as you can see them in the table, six plus six plus six plus 48 plus 12. And you also have to take uh, 30 credit hours from elective courses. So if we can go to the next slide, please. All right. Now, here in this table, you can see the university required courses that you need to take in order to graduate as a Bachelor of History. So some of the courses that you need to take, they are shown in this table. For example, you have to have to take a course on basic philosophy and Islamic worldview, sustainable development, policies and practices, Bahasa Melayo 1 and 2, Usra 1 and 2, leadership, family man management, skill 1, skill 2, English for academic writing, Tilawa Al-Quran 1 and 2, Introduction to Arabic for Quranic Understanding 1 and 2, Ethics and Fit of Contemporary Issues, Knowledge and Civilization in Islam, Yusra Action 1 and 2, in total 20 credit hours. Next. Now, in this table you can see the required courses that are from our Kulia. So, in order for you to graduate, you need to take these courses. Number one is Bahasa Malaya. And two is you have to conduct two special courses, which are final year project one and two, where we, in a way, teach you how to conduct a project, how to be professional historians. Next. And here in this table, you can see the core courses that are required for you to take when you study in our department. So the table shows that you need to take, for example, the industrial training course, where we train you for the job market. Then you have introductory courses from the revealed knowledge and here you see the list of the courses that you can take from Arabic for Islamic studies to Quranic and prophetic texts to Fiqh al sirah to Ulum al-Quran or sciences of Quran, sciences of Hadith, Fiqh, Usul al-Fiqh, Islamic Akida, Islamic Ethics, Islamic Dawah. Next. And here are the required courses from our department. So in order for you to graduate in history, you must take the courses that you can see in the table in front of you. So you need to take introduction to history and civilization, history of Malaysia, history of Maghrib and Andalus, research methodology, Islamic history, history of Malaysia since 1957, modern history of Europe, Islam in modern Southeast Asia, modern history of China, Muslim nations in contemporary history, the course that I teach, history of the United States, Islamic civilization, and the rise and fall of civilizations. Next. Now, apart from the required, you have these optional courses that you can take up to 21 credit hours. So you can take a course about Islam in the Malay world, 
public history, history of Southeast Asia, the Abbasid Caliphate, history and civilization of medieval Europe, modern history of Southeast Asia, social history of Malaysia, history of Russia and Muslim Eurasia, a course that I teach, history of the Ayyubids and Mamluks, Osmanli, or how we are going to call in the coming year Ottoman history, a course that I teach, India under the Sultans and Mughals, modern history of Japan, history or Indonesian history from 1500, Islam and Tajik movements in the Muslim world, Western intellectual history, Muslim historiography, modern history of the Arab world, history of Islamic civilization in Sub-Saharan Africa, modern history of Southeast Asia, and history of Israeli-Palestinian conflict. So from these courses, you can choose up to seven that you will need to take in order to graduate. Next. OK, so you can also take open elective courses that are not listed here, but that are offered even from other departments, I presume. Next, please. Now, some advice for the new students. Uh, an advice that uh, me as an academic advisor to you will give to you is that generally we do not recommend you to take courses higher than your level. So, for example, if you are in the first year, we do not suggest you to take courses from the fourth or third year because they require much more work, proficiency from you, and it doesn't help you to have good grades. Uh, each semester, we suggest you to take between 15 to 18 credit hours, not more, not less. So, we do not suggest you to take many credit hours, especially in the early semesters, because we want you to concentrate and those uh, courses that you take, we want you to really study hard and get good grades. We always advise you to maintain a good CGPA and try to get more than 3.0 for each course. Uh, Something that we as a department and university do is that we appoint for you an academic advisor or a Murabi. And uh, today when we finish this session, you are going to be allocated an academic advisor with whom you can ask questions during the time that you are student leader and that you are not sure about the courses that you take and other academic methods. Next, please. Now, here is a list or a table of the CGPA system that we have here. So, if your CGPA is between 1.67 and 1.90, you have a conditional pass. If your CGP is lower than 1.67, you are dismissed. Uh, final uh, first year students have the opportunity for readmission if they are dismissed. Next, please. So here is another table where you can see the range of the CGPA and the range of the credit hours, which are allowed for you. Next, please. Now, common problem that students face in, when they join uh, our university and department are the following. One is that sometimes students, they do not understand the study plan. This comes because sometimes they have late registration 
wrong choices of courses, etc. So we advise you to take those courses that are required for you and that are easy for you, and we advise you to register in time. Another problem is you, when you do not understand about ourselves. For example, you do not like the major party that you have chosen. You do not know or do not have uh, a best uh, uh, a potential for best strategy for learning. Another problem is uh, when students, they do not keep good relations with Islam. They do not pray, they do simple things and they are detracted from this dunya instead of concentrating in their studies. So the other problem is curiosity in your study. Some students, they waste time playing, playing games, working or dealing with things that are not related to study. And this has a negative impact in your progress. Another problem that uh, some students might face is mental, financial, or family issues. So we, as your Murabi or academic advisors, are here to help you whenever you have uh, problems that we can advise and probably even solve for you. Next. Okay, uh, our university has a, a fantastic exchange program. So, you as a students of our university, during your study here and career, you have the chance to study even in other universities. Next, please. So, uh, we have an IUM student exchange program, and this program will give you the opportunity to study overseas which means outside of Malaysia, for one to two semesters, which ranges from six months to one year. Now, for you to enroll in the exchange program, you will need to apply through the Kulia, the Dean Student Affair Office. You will need to do credit transfers and if you are enrolled in the exchange program, you will have so many benefits. Number one, you will enhance your career prospect. You will understand and appreciate other cultures. And in particular, you are going to improve your language ability. Next. So here are some of the programs that our university have, which I would really strongly suggest for you who have good CGPAs to apply and go for it. So one program that our university has is the Mevlana Exchange Program with a number of Turkish universities. So if you are enrolled in the Mevlana Exchange Program, a university in Turkey is going to admit you for one or two semesters, and you are going to study there. Another exchange program is the Nusantara Summer Program, which happens in Malaysia, Indonesia, Brunei, etc. Another fantastic program is the Erasmus Program, with EU countries, and then there are even other exchange programs that you as students can find, can apply in some other country or university, and if you get admitted, you can approach the department and the CULIA, we can approve it and you can go to study for probably up to a year with another university and we're going to recognize the credits that you are going to take from that. Now, uh, if you'll be a lucky one to be involved in one of these exchange programs, you are going to enrich yourself immensely. Imagine if you spend a semester or two in Turkey or somewhere in European Union. Let us say you are involved in a Greek university 
or in a Spanish or in a UK university. When you go there, you are going to learn the language of this country, the culture. You will see the behavior of these people. You'll establish connections, not only with the students, but also with the professors there. And when you come here, you will appreciate the conditions that we have in our university, and you will be able to, in a way, analyze and understand the differences that are between this country and this university and the other countries. And moreover, if you involve yourself in these exchange programs, you'll have fantastic uh, possibilities for your future, your academic future, to uh, do your master or your PhD, because you'll establish connections with these other universities, and moreover, in the job market. Because you, as a history graduates that are from our university, one day you are going to look for a job. And a student who had, let us say, involved himself in one of these exchange programs, let us say you uh, uh, were part of the Mevlana exchange program, you will have so much experience about Turkey or let us say about Europe, and this will help you a lot even in the job market in the future, because let us say if uh, uh, we are a history department that we need the people who have expertise on, on, on Europe or in Turkey or in some other countries, of, of course we're going to choose the one who has this experience overseas. Anyhow, as you all know, the past two years were horrible because of the coronavirus. These exchange programs, they didn't work, but inshallah, as things are improving with the issue of the COVID-19 throughout the world, you will have to keep this thing in mind and to think about enrolling yourself. Next. Now, requirements. <coughs> uh, for full-time students, second, third, and fourth year, uh, you need to have a CGPA of at least 2.5. You will need to uh, have a good standing in uh, your English, Yale, TOEFL, etc. And uh, you will be interviewed for those students who will enroll themselves in these exchange programs. Next. Okay, so here is a picture from uh, uh, the Bayezid Bazaar, Bayezid Square in, in, in Turkey. So the building that you see in the front of you is part of the complex of uh, Istanbul University. So if uh, someone from you will be lucky to involve himself in the Mevlana exchange program, most probably most of your uh, academic life and exchange you are going to spend in this square. And for me, as a, a professor of Ottoman history, this is a very special square, which uh, I probably show to my students when I teach them about the history of the Yenicharis and Sultan Mahmoud II, because this is the place where uh, most of the uh, rebellions against the sultans and the political troubles of the Ottoman Empire. But even today, I mean, when you have protests in Turkey, this is the place that you want to be. Next. Okay, so this is a picture from probably a library, probably somewhere in the United Kingdom. Next. Okay, now some important links for you as a new students of our department that you have to take note are these two links, the Italian and Imago, uh, and IAUM email. Now, when you register in our university, you have to register in these websites. The Italian <coughs> is very important <coughs> because uh, uh, this is the portal that we are going to communicate with each other. For example, when you do your uh, final exam or even midterm sometimes, announcements and other things, we use Italian. So you have all to register for this one. And Imalum as well, where you are going to check your progress. And it's good that you have an IAM email as well. Next. 
Okay, so this was all. Uh, I hope I was clear. Uh, and uh, I look forward to meeting with you on campus next week, inshallah, if I'm not wrong, when we start our classes. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ossi, for the clear explanation of the academic briefing just now. And now let us proceed with the presentation of FRP briefing by Dr. Kalsa. Please welcome, Dr. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you. I just need a few seconds. So bear with me. Okay. I hope this will work. Uh, okay, just one sec. Can you see my screen? Is it there? Oh, okay, so let's try to have it go back there. Okay, so as you know, um, well, I will be presenting about the final year project. All of you already know about it, but the new students don't. Uh, okay, and I can already see here, sorry. Of course. So you will excuse the typos. Okay. Don't be too judgmental. Anyway, so um, the final year project, uh, I hear we have uh, seven uh, new students, new intake students this semester, is it? Yeah, seven to eight. Seven to eight, okay. Um, so basically, this will be mostly for them because you already know about it. Uh, some of you already have been taking it all, uh, too. Anyway, uh, so the, the uh, FYP, what, what you find, uh, FYP1 and FYP2, uh, it actually stands for Final Year Project. So let us have an overview. Uh, so we'll be uh, looking into what is FYP, who is concerned by FYP, who are the students who need to think about about it and start making arrangement uh, for it. The prerequisites, uh, the method of instruction, uh, because it's not a course. I mean, it's not a course with, with uh, taught classes. Um, the outcomes, uh, the objectives, object objectives, and the length and the method of evaluation. So let us, uh, uh, let us look into it uh, quickly. I won't be very long. Uh, so what is FYP? FYP, as I said, stands for Final Year Project. 
the idea, uh, the objective behind it is that you will be producing a mini thesis. So um, you have heard about the uh, thesis, the master's thesis, uh, or the PhD uh, thesis uh, dissertation. Um, so um, the thing is that uh, when you enroll to the history uh, program uh, at UIA, uh, you graduate. Uh, you graduate after three, four years uh, with a BA with honors, and the fact that it's a BA with honors actually requires you to to write a mini thesis to have this FYP project. So it's a condition we have not always had FYP. We have implemented it, uh, if I'm not mistaken, two years ago. And all new intakes are required to take FYP and to write a mini thesis. Um, so the course code uh, before the validation of the new curriculum, uh, which if I am uh, not mistaken, we will adopt by next year. But for now uh, and for you, these are the course codes for FYP1 and FYP2. FYP1 is uh, 4995. Uh, um, and it's three credit hours. Uh, it's registered as, as three credit hours. And FYP2 is four, uh, 4996, and it's the same number of credit hours. Uh, now, you might be confused about FYP1 and FYP2. Why are, there, why are there two FYPs? FYP1, you will be required to write a research proposal, so to prepare in order to write your mini thesis. And that research proposal will also become the introduction of your mini thesis. FYP2, uh, you will be delving into the mini thesis. Uh, I will give you uh, uh, more details uh, a little bit later. So let us move on and check uh, who, uh, what is the, the target public and when you are supposed to take FYP. So uh, the students who are um, um, who who are who are concerned, sorry, uh, by uh, FYP are the students with metric numbers uh, one seven one and above. Basically, uh, uh, all the new intakes are above. Uh, uh, you are twenty one and uh, soon to be twenty two, I think. Um, and uh, and FYP one is supposed to be taken during semester one of year three. Uh, FYP two uh, the following semester, so semester two of year three. This is the best. Uh, the, I mean, basically, this is the best moment for you to take it. Uh, as of now, we have also accepted uh, a fourth year students because we have started just two uh, years ago, uh, but um, from now on, I believe that uh, uh, we will be uh, taking uh, students for FYP in semester one and semester two of year, uh, semester two of year three. Uh, so let so what do you need to, to do before being able to take FYP? So these are the prerequisites. For FYP1, you are supposed to have taken uh, research methodology uh, and history of Malaysia since 1957. Uh, research methodology is very, very important, especially uh, that uh, most students don't focus on it that much and you tend to uh, forget uh, what you have been taught in History 1000, when we have been talking about uh, the methods, uh, and then uh, and and then uh, research methodology, um, uh, we usually with uh, Dr. Helmi. Um, for FYP2, uh, well, you have the same prerequisites, and logically, uh, FYP1. You can't start FYP2 without having done FYP1. Uh, let's move on. How does it work? As I said, it's not, we don't uh, teach you uh, in class. It's not a taught course. So how does it work if it's not a, a taught course? Um, 
here we are. Basically, uh, the department will give you uh, a, a tribute a supervisor to you. We usually pay attention uh, to um, the topic that you have chosen, um, but um, from experience, and, and, and uh, we have been discussing it during our last meeting, uh, most students have been taking uh, uh, modern and contemporary uh, topics. Um, sometimes that have nothing to do with uh, our specializations. Um, for instance, uh, last semester, semester one, I had a student who worked on um, the uh, Malaysian Special Forces. Um, and uh, my specialization is Middle East and Palestine question. Uh, so you can see, but but this is not alarming to you. I mean, you don't have to be uh, uh, afraid of that because um, research is about methodology. And, um, uh, and uh, with that level of studies that your professors, lecturers have, uh, their job is to lead you on that path. Um, so it's very uh, normal for you to have someone uh, who is not specialized in your topic, uh, but who will nonetheless uh, be able and more than able and more than capable uh, to guide you in your research. So um, the method is, uh, is the same for FYP1 and FYP2. Uh, you will have supervised meetings. Uh, you will have to submit uh, uh, your progress following a schedule uh, decided by your supervisor. Um, FYP2, same thing, supervised meetings, submission of chapters, this time chapters, and progress following a schedule decided by the supervisor. Um, so this schedule uh, uh, will be presented to you at the beginning of the semester, usually. And remember, it is also your responsibility as students to contact your supervisors. Um, you have to be proactive, not expect your supervisor to contact you, to remind you of the work that you have to do. Uh, you have to be proactive. Next. Um, so as I said earlier, the outcomes for FYP1 uh, and FYP2, uh, FYP1, it is a research proposal on a topic that you have chosen and that has been validated by your supervisor. Uh, you are very, very new. You are just beginning uh, uh, to do research. Um, there are many things that you are not yet aware of or that you have not yet develop the skills for. Um, and uh, often uh, uh, we, um, we usually um, accept students' uh, topics, um, but we also usually try to narrow them down because sometimes you come up with a topic that uh, would not even be, uh, I mean, that, that a, a three or four years PhD would not uh, even uh, um, uh, cover. So um, we have to, usually we have to help you narrow it down. It's normal and uh, frustration, your frustration is normal, but, uh, but remember we are here to make it feasible for you. Um, so uh, FYP2, uh, it's an extension of FYP1. Remember, it's an extension of, of, of FYP1. And it is, you will be writing the mini thesis that will be built on the research proposal that you would have finalized during FYP1. Um, now, the objectives. Uh, so, I told you FYP1 is about you writing a research project um, uh, and, and FYP2 is you writing the thesis uh, that extends uh, that research project. Uh, what does it mean for you? Uh, for you, FYP1, basically you will have to present and justify the need or the interest in studying that topic that you have chosen. Because 
obviously you can imagine that um, uh, there is no uh, interest in, in writing or, or doing research about uh, on a topic that has already been researched uh, um, extensively. I mean, if you are not going to bring anything new, uh, there is no use for it. Okay, it's not about multiplying uh, the number of writings about the same topic and saying exactly the same things all over again. However. That doesn't mean that you have to make a completely original contribution, especially for your FYP. You are BA students. We don't expect you to do that. Uh, sometimes your uh, expectations are, uh, are uh, higher than ours. And we know that at this stage in your, uh, in your uh, student experience, uh, you uh, cannot or only, I mean, yeah, you, you usually cannot do that. You don't have, uh, uh, you you haven't acquired yet the skills and the knowledge that is necessary to make um, a, a completely new, uh, uh, a completely uh, uh, new uh, contribution. Uh, although it can happen, I'm not saying it cannot happen. Uh, but but before doing that, before jumping uh forward and doing that uh, our job and your job is to learn how to conduct good research adopt good practices uh, uh learn uh, how to deal and how to manage sources how to look for and manage sources uh how to analyze uh to give the tools to be able to analyze theoretical and practical um so don't expect uh, or uh, uh, don't have high uh, or, 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 or um, unrealistic expectations from yourselves um, for when you are in, in BA and even in master's, because master's means what? It means mastering your topic. It doesn't. Uh, so, so even in master's, we expect you to, to, to bring uh, um, uh, some some uh, newness or some some or to fill in some gap or but but above all we expect students to master the topic or uh, or, or or that part of the topic that they have chosen uh, and by mastering it means that you need to be aware of the sources that are available out there of the state of the uh, current research uh, past and current research uh, and so on. So this is for FYP1. You will have to present and justify the need uh, or interest uh, in studying the topic that you have chosen. For FYP2, as I said, it's an extension of FYP1. So um, basically, you uh, uh, will be tasked uh, with providing a synthesis or perspective on your topic. Uh, we will discuss this, uh, uh, you will all discuss this with your supervisor uh, uh, when the time comes. Uh, next, and it will be, uh, uh, and it will be the end. Uh, so, um, the length and evaluation. So, the length of this FYP uh, project, uh, basically of the research proposal, and of uh, the uh, mini thesis. So for FYP1, your research proposal, you are required to write uh, up to 3,300 words. That doesn't mean that we will accept 1,000 words. No, you are required to write basically 3,000, 3,300 words. Um, remember that this will be part of the, the overall uh, mini thesis. It will, be, uh, it will become your introduction. Um, so this research proposal will be marked over 100, and in order to uh, uh, and in order uh, uh, for us to to be able to mark you, we have uh, created a rubric, a very clear rubric of our expectations, um, and this will be shared with uh, uh, with you. The rubric will be shared with you uh, at the beginning of the semester. Um, 
with each each batch of uh, of FYP students students sorry now this was for FYP one let's look for FYP let's look at FYP two uh, well FYP two we will expect you you will be expected to uh, uh, write uh, uh, approximately ten thousand uh, words and inclusive of footnotes and references because remember this is a research uh proposal and uh, uh, a mini thesis so everything will have to be referenced again you will be talking about this with your supervisors um the mini thesis is also marked over uh, uh 100 and you will also receive a rubric in order to be able to write it and the submissions as we said earlier uh, are done according to a calendar that is shared with you at the beginning of the semester uh, so as to make sure that your supervisor has ample time to share uh, his her comments with you and advise you to the best uh, uh, for you to to complete on time i think my time is up so um and i finished so all i have to say now is good luck and uh uh, and uh, I will see you during our next meeting. Um, so here we are. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kausa. Finally, I would like to welcome Dr. Fauzia for internship briefing. Please welcome, Dr. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Selamat tengah hari. Okay, kita, okay, speak English, eh? Uh, next week, okay, we're going to have, um, we're going to start here, okay, the first, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the semester, semester two, right? Um, the first week of semester two. Um, and um, in fact, here, yeah, um, even now, yeah, even prior to the semester two, um, for those who, uh, wish to do internship or industrial training, you've got to uh, start finding places. Uh, so I'm going to talk about this matter. Uh, I'll spend about 15 minutes or so on internship. Yeah? And hopefully if you have questions, you can uh, ask me um, um, after my briefing uh, towards, towards the end of this uh, session. Okay, I'm at home, yeah, so you can expect such uh, noises, yeah, or, or such sounds. Now, um, this subject history 4994, um, so this is meant for mainly third year students. Uh, I've checked the names, just now the list of uh, names of students who are, who are with us, I mean, in this session, I can, and I can uh, see that most of you are third year, third year students, right? Um, so, um, perhaps, yeah, uh, this uh, briefing, uh, which I'm about to uh, um, explain to you, um, um, you know, is um, something that you can find to be useful, hopefully, inshallah. Um, this course, uh, or this uh, history 4994 carries six grid hours, uh, which is quite a lot, yeah. Um, uh, it used to be like three good hours, yeah, but now we've got we have increased it to six, um, and it's compulsory uh, for all students uh, with metric number one seven one onwards. Um, the um, grading either pass or fail. Uh, no more A B C D or E F, yeah, like we used to be, like like we used to have, like you know, two or three uh, um, years ago. Um, and for this coming uh, internship, um, in, during this semester three, um, we are going to have 10 weeks, yeah, um, of internship, uh, starting from 1st of uh, August until 7th of October. Uh, by the way, I'm sure uh, some of you have uh, noticed or, or you already, you already know that we've got a group, right? WhatsApp group created by Historian with the help of Brother Harry. Um, and I've checked the list of students here who have 
um, given their names, yeah? Um, um, and these are students who um, intend to do internship in the coming semester three. They are about 44, 45 students, right? Um, so this uh, internship, 10 weeks, as I've said, not tough, yeah? Uh, in the previous years or previous, I mean, semester, semester three, uh, normally 12 weeks, three months, but this time 10 weeks only, which is okay because some departments, they only do what, um, eight weeks, yeah? Um, two months. Yeah, so we are going to have two and a half months. So I think that's fine. Now, um, as for um, things that you need to do at the moment, for those who wish to do internship, you have to start looking for placement now, yeah, from now on. And you've got until 30th of June. Um, so about four weeks, uh, not four, it's four months, yeah, four months, yeah, you have that, I mean, duration, yeah. Um, of four months uh, to uh, uh, to start looking for a placement, uh, and by the end of June, thirtieth of June, you need to submit your uh, name. Uh, you need to submit uh, the name of institution. Uh, you need to fill up a form. We, we have registration form which you can upload from the Kulia website, and you need to submit this form to Sister Rose. Please do that here. Yeah? Um, by uh, 30th of June. If you have found, let's say, uh, the place where you want to do internship earlier, like by May, you know, you have got a place, then submit earlier. You don't have to wait until end of June. Um, private sectors, uh, government, yeah, um, sector, I mean, you can apply to both. Um, and you have to have a few documents yeah? and already I've um, informed yeah, the WhatsApp group, yeah, the internship WhatsApp group as to what other things that you need to prepare. A resume, uh, partial, transcript, um, covering letter, uh, you know, your own personal letter. You can explain a bit as to what you want to look for in terms of the job scope here. Yeah? Um, and then also recommendation later from the department. So there are four things that you need to prepare. Um, but before you submit these documents to the places or institutions that you want to apply to, uh, you, I, I, I would suggest that you call them first or email them first, yeah, telling you that uh, you're interested. And um, if they have vacancies, um, they can inform you right away. Do not waste time. Yeah? They say you, you do not know whether they, they are vacancies or not, then you're just sending you know, your applications. Um, so that would be a waste of time. You need to be sure first that they have vacancies or they have these you know, uh, training yeah? uh, for interns. Yeah? Only then you send these documents to them. Yeah? And before you send these documents, there are things to consider. Um, uh, like uh, job scope, you need to know first what kind of job that you would do, yeah, at, the, uh, at that institution. Um, at least in your conversation or your email, yeah, with the staff, uh, uh, you know, of that place, you can just uh, tell that you like to um, um, uh, get yeah, um, these kind of experience, you know, doing this, doing that. So just tell them what you like to do. Uh, and also you can ask about um, working hours. You can ask about um, allowance if you want to, yeah? So get to know some of the things, yeah, that, you know, um, that, you, that, you, that you would do. Yeah, I mean, once you're accepted as intern there, and um, then you send all these um, documents, yeah? Uh, and you can send at three places at one time. Send three places and then wait. Wait for like one month or two months and then if there's a, re a reply, uh, you know, you um, uh, respond accordingly. If the institution yeah, said yes, normally they would ask for confirmation. So you confirm yeah, whether you will accept or not. Yeah? Don't just you know, keep quiet. If they say no, 
then you, you say thank you yeah you say thank you and then you move on you know applying for other places um if no responses at all you can do follow-ups um but uh if still no uh, responses after following up you know then uh start looking for other placements yeah uh if you're not so sure if you if you're not sure about whether you can apply to this place or that place whether you can um look for this kind of job or that job you can ask me um you know uh, whether it's suitable or not to do internship at this place to do you know such uh you know a job here uh, or this job or that job so you can ask me first before you send documents here to them okay now if you want to apply uh, to government ministries or departments um you need to act um early yeah uh, or to apply very early uh, at least three months um because they've got a long uh, waiting list yeah uh, for those who um who are, who are doing internship yeah, at these government ministries or departments uh, uh they would interview you they would have a short list first they would shortlist the applicants and then they would interview you and then they will, only then they will respond yeah and the whole process will take uh, three to four months yeah and so that that's a bit uh long yeah i mean compared to uh if you apply to, to private sectors normally it's uh quicker in terms of the uh, processing time um there is internship booklet that you can download from the Kulet website you can have a look yeah, as to uh, all sorts, all, all, the, all types of documents that you need to know, that you need to fill up here. Yeah? Uh, and then there will be also internship briefing. Uh, so this will be conducted in week 13 of uh, semester two. So um, during this briefing, I'll be giving you more details about the training. Um, so this uh, briefing is meant for those who are confirmed okay, to do internship. And so by that time, you, you know, it's for sure that you're going to do for you you're going to do internship you've got all the placement here ready and so on um now before i end my briefing um uh just a couple of tips here for you in looking for placements um one is to uh think about the nature of jobs that you want to do if you are someone who like to meet up people you like to be you know you know, to be what you you are kind of an what extrovert kind of extrovert kind of person. You don't like to you know sit here in the office. You want to meet up people. You want to talk to people. You want to explore. You know, um, uh, all these uh, all kinds of activities. Um, so um, that's something to think about here as to what kind of institution that you want to apply to. If you like to do more like admin work, yeah? Uh, so you need to apply to some, uh, you know, uh, suitable institutions, yeah? Um, that offer that kind of job yeah, for you. Uh, for instance, like on campus, we have a couple of departments, not departments, we have a couple of units and offices, uh, uh, and they mainly assign their interns to do research, yeah? Uh, doing some research, doing writing some papers, helping with the research, you know, some studies. Uh, so if you do, if you like that kind of job, you can apply, yeah, you know, to these places or institutions. If you want to, um, what, to meet up people and others, you can, yeah, just feel free yeah, to apply to other institutions, yeah, that uh, have or, or that give you the opportunity. Uh, to do that yeah second thing is uh location uh think about as to whether you want a place that is close uh to home or you don't mind yeah i uh, you know um but then if you uh choose a place that's far from home you need to think about accommodation and transportation yeah so think about all these reasons all these factors because I have uh, the experience where students, um, 
when they uh, they've got the placement and then they you know um, reported for duty and after a couple of weeks they said to me that they wanted to stop doing the internship. Why? Because the workplace is far from home, yeah, uh, or because uh, he uh, didn't have the transportation. Okay, so you've got to think about all this yeah, before you start applying. Yeah, and then number three, uh, allowances. Uh, government uh, agencies normally they do not give allowances, but private institutions sometimes they do. Uh, sometimes 300 ringgit per month, sometimes uh, 500, and some institutions they give as much as seven to 900 yeah, per month. Yeah, so you may want to ask yeah, uh, the institution um, um, if you want uh, some allowance in return here yeah, for your services. And then working hours. Uh, be sure, yeah, that you know, yeah, you know whether you've got to you 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 only work during weekdays or you have to work during weekends as well. Because I have com I mean complaints, not complaints, but you know these yeah students, yeah, uh, they lamented yeah, that that they they have to work uh, long hours uh, even Sundays. Yeah, they've got to go to work. Yeah, even sometimes they have to stay. Uh, an office till 9 p.m., 9, uh, 10 p.m., yeah? Uh, so if you do, do not like such working environment or uh, such working hours, make sure you find, um, you know, um, um, suitable um, um, what um, places, yeah? Where they uh, perhaps yeah, give uh, or uh, they, they, they allow you to work in from 9 till 5 only, yeah? Um, normal working hours, okay. Uh, and as to whether you can do online uh, internship or not, given the uh, pandemic situation at the moment, here yeah, we still have this pandemic here yeah, issue. Uh, so it depends. Some institutions they do allow you to do uh, online here yeah, uh, internship, but some they would require to they would requ require you to be physically present. Yeah, uh, and some institutions they they would uh, say that you can do uh, online work here yeah, from uh, like this week. Next week you have to come to office and then online again. You know, so alternatively, so it depends. And this also you can ask the institutions here yeah, that uh, you want to apply to. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's all for me. Uh, as I've said, there'll be more details on this matter um, in the uh, in semester two, yeah, um, when we have the briefing. Okay, with, with that, I end my uh, um, briefing. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kaza. Uh, eh, sorry, what I say? <laughs> sorry, Dr. Kaza. Thank you, Dr. Fazia. Now we will have a short announcement for Murabi Murid session. For uh, all new intake students, please refer your name and your Murabi. Later, uh, our committee will share a WhatsApp group link for you to join with your Murabi. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Harid. Now we already come to the last session, which is Q&A session. Those who have any question, you may turn on your microphone or write your question in the chat box. Assalamu alaikum. Is it, uh, everyone can hear my voice? Yes. Uh, inshallah, uh, I have uh, some questions. Uh, three questions. Uh, one is about uh, the major amendment. And two of it is about the uh, student SJ program. So my first question is about the major minor. Uh, is it we have to, uh, if we want to take minor, is it we have to uh, like uh, interrupt for our request from the kuliah? Or we just have to uh, register the subject that we, we, have, we want to do it as minor uh, during the period uh, season? And two other questions is about uh, uh, program exchange student. My question is about: Is it if if we, we enter the exchange program student, is it we have to uh, add 
our semester of study. And the second question is about, is it possible for us to uh, do our FYP during the program as a student? Is it, uh, I hope all can get my question, inshallah. Okay, uh, Muhammad, uh, can you can you repeat your question, please? Uh, first question is about uh, the major uh, major. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, is it if we want to take minor? Is it uh, we have to request from the other kuliah, or we just have to take the subject during the project? Mm, okay, that that question I can't help you with because uh, because I am wondering too. So uh, I think that Dr. Fauzia has more experience with this, uh, and she also used to be head of department at one point, so uh, she might be able to answer. Okay, let me get this right. You are asking whether you can do what major? Yeah, if you want to take minor, like minor in other uh, courses, like IRK, like that, is it we have to uh, request from the Kulia or we just uh, can add the subject during the period season? Okay, um, every single department uh, has a study plan of its own. So if, let's say, you want to do minor in um, a particular department here yeah, of RK department, let's say Usuluddin, right? You go to that, uh, you, you you download, I mean, the study plan of Usuluddin and see. Yeah, uh, they have, I think there is a section here yeah, where they list down the list of courses yeah, that uh, students have to take to do minor in their department. Okay? Mm. Okay. Uh, Brother Fis, supposedly you can, uh, based on our friends' experience, you can uh, consult their academic advisor to ask. Mm. Their yeah. If you're still not clear, then you uh, find out who's the uh, academic advisor of that particular department and then you just email to him or her. Yeah? Okay. Thank you, Mender. Uh, okay. My next question. It's about the uh, student extend program. I have two questions of it. Uh, the first is, uh, if we enter the program, is it we have to come? Is it we have to add our semester of study? And the second question is, is it possible for us to do FYP during the uh, program extend student? I'm sorry because I'm not so good in English. <laughs> okay, student exchange program. Do you see anything <laughs> you want to say? Uh, well, uh, I presume that you should uh, be in better position than me since uh, you are even head of department. I mean, I can tell them how the exchange works overseas, but probably you could advise. I mean, I don't know if the exchange program is working because of the COVID-19. Okay. So I may explain something about the exchange program. Uh, you see, um, the... Um, there is uh, normally um, from time to time announcements made here uh, by the, the university um, uh, about the um, intention about this what you call this now uh, about what uh, exchange programs here yeah? exchange programs um, whereby students who have to apply within the stipulated time within the given time. Um, they have to fill up the form and then um, submit um, to the Kulia. Um, and in the past, before the COVID, from my experience, uh, normally uh, universities in Turkey, a couple of the universities there, they would um, um, they would give they would uh, send advertisements, yeah, um, or you know these. Uh, um, provide some information as to what you need to do if you want to apply and study there. Uh, but uh, ever since the COVID, I mean, no more uh, announcements yeah, or advertisements made. Uh, but if you, let's say, want to find the places on your own, you can go to their website and then you can, uh, you know, search for yourself. I mean, all the information here needed here. Uh, find out as to how, what are the processes involved, 
uh, how long that you need to spend here in studying there. And also you can even get to know how um, uh, you can get to know as to whether they can sponsor you or not. Some universities, like inter in Turkey, my students, I mean, they used to go there, some of them, and they uh, were sponsored, yeah? Uh, at least uh, their tuition yeah, fees, yeah? Uh, were sponsored or were funded, and they have to pay only uh, the what the uh, hostel for hostel and the food and the flight tickets, yeah. And then um, normally uh, they spend uh, about one semester there, and sometimes two semesters. I think for exchange program you cannot go beyond one year. I mean, the longest that you can spend in doing this uh, exchange program, um, one year, yeah, one year. And then what you can do after you got back here yeah, home, you can uh, transfer the credit, the credit hours, yeah. Uh, but make sure the subjects that you took over there are somewhat equivalent to the subjects that we offer over here in order to do the credit, credit transfer not totally different or not. I mean, there should be some similarities, you know, like Ottoman Osmani history here. You know, you can take some Ottoman courses over there and then, you know, you transfer the credit here, yeah, over here. Uh, so that can be done. Okay? Let me add a few things. Just mm -hmm. I want to add that if you want to go to first, you get the list of the courses from there and we have to compare here, the head of department will compare. Ah. And mm. then they allow it that these courses you can take it, otherwise they're not credited. Your time is wasted. Okay. Mm. So for that, you have to check the list from there, what they offer, what we have, equivalent mm. there somehow. And then you have to use the department, head of the department to go through this list mm. and they look there, everything when they said approved, then you can go. In Turkey, mostly in, uh, finance, because this is both industry when they have the MOU. So in this mm. case, there, there's no involvement of fee because if their student will come, the university will not charge any fee. You will go there, and they will not also charge the fee. That is the already level. Hostel, mm. Turkey generally they give free you know, or maybe very normal charge. It is also very subsidized, quite cheap. So it's Turkey. So Turkey is more better than uh, other places. So if you go to Turkey, there are many universities there. And you find the international department office, you find the list of the universities, those who are MOU with UI. So you among these universities, you select it. That's okay. As far as you said that other university or other departments, also you can select on your own and put the apply to the there. If the university allowed, you can go there. So this is the way. That is good, the maximum two semester. Or maybe one semester or two maximum. Okay. You can you you consult with uh, the academic advisor or the OC. I mean, in comparing, in knowing in which courses yeah, that 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 are supposed ah, to be taken, and, and then you get the teacher from the academy. Right, he must right, sign right, right, right. the form. <laughs> in fact, if you're interested to study or, or to do in, to do this exchange uh, program in Brunei, uh, Singapore, Indonesia, I mean, in this region also can. But you have to do the work. I mean, you've got to find the places on your you know on your own. Yeah. Uh, I have just shared, I've just shared some links with the students. They probably can uh, go through and read them. So uh, there are possibilities to uh, even get Erasmus scholarships if they want to do masters. In, in, uh, uh, actually, this master program works between two European universities. But there are, I've, I've read in the past, there are scholarships even for Malaysians. And the last link uh, shows about those students who are from non EU countries who want to do Erasmus or Bachelor. So you have to go through the links and to check. There are many opportunities. Now I do not know because of the COVID, but uh, I know before COVID, I had a number of uh, students from uh, uh, Albania who they were. Uh, getting these scholarships and actually if you go through the Erasmus in EU you get quite a good scholarship you get around 1000 euro 4000 ringgit a month which is which is good for a student but you have to go through the links that I share okay. 
Thank you, Lopez. The, the very next thing which uh, I uh, arranged for in signing of the MOU, because I was involved in that, that maybe next year he was there or he reviewed the call. So that one is there. I, I know the vice chancellor and everybody, because I was there, the main person to sign in there at that time, in 2018. So they are still, they sent me later uh, emails. And uh, Misty also asked me, is there any new student? So if you are interested, look at there. And maybe I can recommend that, that I can. Or a friend or anybody. Is there anybody there? Or are there anybody else interested to go visit that team? This is not only to her, but you have to study also. You are a good, good, nice, but also you have to study work hard. Because at least I'm very meticulous. In there, I found some students are very meticulous in language, in their thing. The student is high. So you have to work hard. Yeah. I found this. Uh, I think there is a link, eh? I think, which you can check out. Um, I'm not sure whether it's still uh, active or not, or still, is, whether it can still be used or not. www.iium.edu.my slash ICEO. ICEO, I mean, that's the uh, uh, unit eh? in our university. Uh, that uh, has, uh, they even have a list of uh, new cities that sign MOU uh, with uh, UIA. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So even any forms, anything, any processes that you want uh, to know about this exchange program, you have to go to this link. You have to go to, to this unit, yeah, ICEO, the name, yeah. Um, okay. Anything else in this? Because yeah, they are there, you can see them. Huh? Uh, anybody, anybody ask them? Any other questions? Ah, okay, uh, again, I'll be in it. Just to go to LP or any other place, you know, or there. No sister is asking any question. Yeah, I believe uh, Brad Duffy was asking if uh, he can do final year project during his overseas exchange of program. I think it's not possible, right, doctor? Because you have to be under supervision of our HP. Ah, cannot, cannot, cannot. Tak boleh. <laughs> FYP, you must do here. I mean, you have to have our own... You cannot do what you're moving in there. <laughs> ah, you cannot do over there. Okay. You have to plan well. I mean, right from the first year, you have to plan well. When, you know, to do the internship, when to do the FYP, when, when to do this exchange program if you want, if you plan to have one, everything you have to sort out, yeah, from the beginning. Training yeah. all this thing, because that's why yeah. I this in the last year. So we can do it. Okay. okay. I think that's all. Uh -huh. Thank you, Dr. I'm sorry, okay. By the end of QA session, there's no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <clears throat> it must the end of this program. Thank you so much for the lecturers and students who came today. And before we end this event, we will have a photo session. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm so sorry. Students and lecturers, oh, welcome to. <laughs> It's okay. okay. It's fine. a good sign. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is very good. Oh, let's hear this. Oh, it's really Our cameras. All right. <clears throat> we should switch on the cameras. Please open the camera. <clears throat> All right, your microphone is muted. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, yeah. one. Two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, last one. One, two, three.
Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. And on behalf of committee members, we apologize for any mistake. And please do not forget to fill in your attendance. The link for the attendance in the chat box. I will end this session with Abilahi Tafi Walidaya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Okay. Bye, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now does COVID have taken your break, um, lunch and breakfast? As I see, it's gone because of the COVID. Afterwards, we are going to arrange it for our students. You will be staff too. Thank you. Okay, shall I? Okay, so I go. Thank you, Sam. Mul, baru dia jumpa hari quarantine mul. Hey, lagi, hey, lagi dua hari. Dua hari. Dua hari. Alright, jaga diri mul. <laughs>